What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with my free agency grades. Now that the first wave of free agency is over with, I'm sure we're going to get a couple signings here and there throughout the next few weeks. But it seems like a bulk of the cash to the tune of $200 plus million dollars has been spent. So I'm going to hand out grades for all the signings so far. Plus, we have an additional signing to hit on that Denver made late last night. And I might have missed it because I might have been a degenerate sinking my teeth into some March Madness bets. But I do want to share it with you guys here at the start of the show. So Mike Kliss tweeted out, free agency can be fluid at this stage. Per source, quarterback Isang Bassey is, is finishing up a one-year deal to return to Broncos. Depth that nickel behind Kwan Williams. Bassey also a good special teamer. Bassey, who we know has kind of bounced around a little bit, will throw his career stats up on screen. Was with the Broncos, was with the Chargers, back with the Broncos. I don't have an issue with this move, right? He's going to be battling for a roster spot come training camp. But right now, like uh, Mike Kliss pointed out, he is the backup nickel corner slot guy on the depth chart behind Williams. So when you look at the Broncos CB depth chart here, Pat Sertan, Damari Mathis, currently your CB one and two. Williams in the slot, Bassey behind him. And then there's a good drop-off after that. Denver does need to add some more players because I don't know if you guys are ready for the Fayon Hicks show if it gets to that point after just one injury. So anytime a signing is made, we're going to get you guys coverage on it. So make sure to subscribe. Don't miss any Broncos free agency news. Plus, I'm trying to reach 13,000 subscribers. So, hey, would greatly appreciate it if you haven't already going down and hitting that sub button. Now let's get into some Broncos free agency grades. Let's get our red pen out and let's start handing out A, B, C's, even D's. Maybe we'll have to wait and see. But we're going to go signing by signing and just sort of break it down a little bit. And I'll give you my letter grade on it, starting in order of money given out. And that is right tackle Mike McGlinchey, five-year, $87.5 million dollars. The first initial signing was Baltimore Ravens guard Ben Powers, four-year, $51.5 million contract. So the two biggest contracts given out went to the Broncos' biggest need by far, offensive line. Here are the PFF grades for McGlinchey and Powers from 2022. Just head-to-head -head right here so you can see what the nerds at PFF said about these guys. I think I've probably gotten a little too high on Mike McGlinchey. I don't think that's an issue, though, right? He's never gone over 80 overall grade in PFF uh, in his entire five-year career. Top 10 pick out of Notre Dame who maybe has kind of rode the wave of being a top 10 pick. So we just assume like he's got to be that good. But I still like the signing a lot. Don't get me wrong. What does Denver need? A franchise right tackle. Not a carousel and revolving door right there. Finally, they get that. And then there's Ben Powers who comes over to replace Dalton Reisner. So the former K-State Wildcat is done at mile high. We're going to look at the other signings in just a second. But today's show is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. And so can you at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I give AG1 a shot because I hated taking pills and vitamins. and was looking for a supplement that actually tastes great. I take it first thing in the morning, and it really helps me with starting my day on the right foot and getting into a healthier lifestyle. So shout out to AG1 for that and making me follow, uh, making me get into a path of making good, healthy decisions down the road. Also, covering my nutritional bases for the day couldn't be easier thanks to Athletic Greens. All I do is just mix a small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing in the morning. It's also very nice because it costs less than $3 a day. It's a very effective daily habit that uses the highest quality sourced ingredients. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D along with five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I put that link for everyone in the comments and the description of today's video. Let's get back to some uh, free agency grades. Going through the top two offensive players signed, Mike McGlinchey. I'm going to give it a B plus. And I think a week ago, former me would say, are you out of your mind? B plus, this is an A plus signing. I'm going to go B plus just because 
it ha it's the biggest contract given out so far. No one's given out more than $87.5 million. After seeing what some of the other tackles went for, might be a bit of an overpay. But hey, if you got your number one guy and you're the Walton Penner group, what's an extra million or two here and there? So I'm going to go B plus just to kind of do a bit of a heat check on myself for the big contract given out for a tackle that's never finished top 10 of like never finished above 80 in PFF overall ranking. So just a bit of like a cool down. Don't get completely drunk on the Mike McGlinchey signing. Still like it. Still love it. Just can't be an absolute homer and just go, hey, that's an A-plus right there. Ben Powers, I'm actually going to give this one an A-minus just because I think the value is incredible. Four years, $51 million, That's about 12 or so million a season. Really good money for a really good guard that's going to help sure up the offensive line. I also gave it an A-minus because I think about the interior offensive line for Denver. What's the one spot that needs to be addressed? Center. So if Denver, for example, goes with Luke Wattenberg, their seventh-round pick last year, man, if he is sandwiched in between Quinn Miners and Ben Powers, I could be center. You know what I mean? Working between those two guys, it's going to make life very easy for whoever the center is next year if it's someone a little underqualified. All right, moving on to the third biggest signing. That is defensive end Zach Allen, and we'll pair that with another defender, linebacker Alex Singleton. So both got three-year contracts. Very different pay grades, though. We'll throw the stats up for you guys to see what they did in 2022 in terms of just defensive stats altogether. Zach Allen was limited, only played in 13 games, suffered a, uh, a hand injury. But clearly, Vance Joseph, the new DC in town, vouched for a former Arizona Cardinal player of his. Five and a half sacks, a career high for him. He's gotten better each and every single, uh, each and every season. I just don't know if he's ready for a three-year, $47 million contract. Alex Singleton, on the other hand, led the team in tackles, was the unsung hero of this team. I'm very happy for him that he got a decent payday, too. Three years, $18 million. Not all of it's guaranteed, but I'm giving this an A. I was a huge fan of his. I've said it before, but I love repeating it because it goes to show what hard work does. I thought this was a C signing last year, coming over from Philly, a special teamer who maybe could start for a couple games of an injury in shoes. No, he was a fantastic contributor for this team. That's an A in my book right there. Great player on and off the field. For Zach Allen, I'm going to go C+. Plus. I just think $47.5 million is a lot of money for a guy with five and a half career sacks, and like five and a half sacks in a season as a career high. 11 and a half sacks, I think it is, over his entire career. So I just think Denver probably threw a little bit too much money at a guy who seems to be on the come up, and so was Shaq Barrett. So we know how that worked for the Bucks, but maybe they got a bit of their head of their skis on this signing. Now, of the top four signings, or maybe another signing we're going to look at in just a moment, what's been your favorite signing so far? Is it Mike McGlinchey? Is it Alex Singleton coming back, or Ben Powers, or... Maybe it's Zach Allen. Let me know in the comments section below. Love hearing what you guys have to say. Some other free agent tracker stuff here. Jared Stidham. We'll kind of run through these. Samaj P. Ryan, Chris Manhurts, and Trayman Smith all got two-year contracts. The most being $10 million for Stidham. $5 million a season. Initially, I was like, that's fine. That's not a big overpay. After seeing what some other backup quarterbacks are getting... Maybe they backed the truck up a little bit to the tune of like one extra million dollars um, for Jared Stidham, who hasn't necessarily shown that he is a you know a reliable backup QB. Then there's Samaj P. Ryan, two years, seven and a half million dollars. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan, who was a longtime backup with the Cincinnati Bengals, and now he's in line to be a starter for the Denver Broncos. P. Ryan, last year for the Bengals, 16 games, 394 yards. I know Sean Payton is very excited about the flexibility and Swiss Army knife um, abilities that he brings to Denver as you know a very good pass blocker, can also catch the football and run in between the tackles. It'll be interesting, though, because this is the first time in his career he'll be slated to be the RB1. And... Who knows how long Javante Williams will be out for if there are serious concerns with his injury and you really want to run the football, I thought you might go for someone like 
De- David Montgomery or Miles Sanders, but ultimately looks like Denver doesn't want to be victim to paying veteran running backs. All right, let's get through some grades for those four players, though. Jared Stidham to see why he's a backup quarterback. It's hard to really be that excited about a backup QB. Hopefully we never see him play because hopefully Russell Wilson balls out next year and is healthy and it's like we don't even need the backup QB. P. Ryan, I'm going to give it a B-. minus. He's a very talented back and maybe he over a full workload of a season will be a 1,000-yard, 10-touchdown kind of guy. So I want to be optimistic. Um, I think he's one of the best backups, like I said. So I'll boost him from like a C plus to a B minus because of that. But I'm not going to be jumping up and down over a guy who's, I don't think, ever gone over 500 yards in a season. All right, Chris Manhurts, the tight end, who another player that was once with Sean Payton. It's a C. Why? Because you or I had never heard of him before the Denver Broncos signed him. Trayman Smith comes over from Houston. He's a return man uh, guy. Also, a, uh, offers you some uh, some depth at outside corner. It'll be I give C plus because I'm very curious to see what Montreal Washington's role looks like on this team. If there is a role at all or a spot for him, if Smith takes over as the punt and kick returner. Now, some other free agent signings here by the Broncos. Michael Burton, the fullback, one year, $1.3 million, also with the Saints at one point. Uh, P.J. Locke and then Isang Bassi, who we talked about this morning. Don't have the details on them yet, but these are three lower-level signings. They're not going to make or break anything on the season, most likely, so you can chalk it up as a C. Three players that the Broncos uh, tendered, Jonas Griffith, Quinn Bailey, and Corliss Waitman. Who remembers the Jonas Griffith hype train all offseason long last year? Now it looks like he's going to be the first linebacker off the bench for Josie Jewell or Singleton. So we looked at all the free agent signings so far made by the Broncos. Let me know if you had to grade this free agency class, what grade would you give it? An A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know in the comment section below what grade you would give this Broncos free agent class. Now let's take a look at players Denver lost in free agency. The most notable one, Draymond Jones. He goes up to Seattle. Three-year, $51 million contract. So a bit more money than Zach Allen. So the Broncos found their cheaper replacement in Arizona Cardinals defensive end. Allen, honestly, I like Draymond Jones, but not for that much money. I think that's a good pass by Denver. Calvin Anderson goes back to the Patriots. Eric Sauberts off to Miami. What about the long snapper? feel like you never lose those guys. Jacob Bobinmower, excuse me, uh, he's going to the Raiders. Then a pair of Texan signings made. Andrew Beck and Mike Boone will always have that Andrew Beck week one game against the Seahawks. Graham Glasgow goes back to Detroit. And Chase Edmonds, don't have the details yet, but he signed with the Bucks, who don't have any good running game whatsoever. To put this thing in a bow, what would be my overall grade for Denver and free agency? I'm going to go B+, plus, okay? I, I say that because I think if I gave him an A, it's just, hey, this is an absolute can't-miss signing. Denver's all the way back. No, I'm going to put it B plus just because I know that Sean Payton is watching this video and he's showing it to the whole team, and I want, I want them to stay hungry. So Sean and the boys, B+, plus will upgrade it to an A if this team starts winning some games in September for a change. So... B plus for now with an asterisk could be could be an A if this team starts off 2 and 0. Oh. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in, making us a part of your Sunday. Get back to March Madness. I'll see you guys later.